we are live and we are back. Let's go. I'm Corey. I'm Jordan. It's the Corey and Full Effect Podcast, and we are back. Like we never left. We are back like we never left. Episode 20. Episode 20, like Dr. Jero. I'm say we, we switched. We yeah. switched, uh, you know, we, uh, we, uh, we, uh, we what, what are these type of numbers? What you mean? Like, ones, tens, we're still in the tens, but we're in the twenties now, but I thought it was nothing. Let me stop. One Let me stop. Let me stop. Like 10 and 20 are even numbers. One is not. Stop it. I don't know what I'm talking about. Prime? Is it, no, prime don't worry about it. Now, tw- is not 20, 20, 20 is even, so it's not a prime number. Uh, gotcha. Anyways, number two is the only even prime number. Anyways, so, um, episode 20, Dr. Jerome. Was he an android? He was. It's over 9,000! I thought he was a human, then he saved himself to become an android. Nah, he was an android. They, there's a whole episode that explains it. His head pops off, like, and everything. They show his brain, but he's... He's, he's, an he's still an android. He's a human that got converted into. That's what I'm saying. So he was a human. Every, yeah. Everybody else is an it's actual robot. robot. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. He used to be a human. He was yeah. the Red Army Dragon Ball. They'd be out. Yeah. They well, was out here gang banging. Well, they remember they technically fought him in Dragon Ball. <laughs> yeah. Not him specifically. Yeah. 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 The Red, yeah, the Red Army is wild. That's you know little baby Goku. All right. All right. Anyways, though, as y'all know, even episodes be wild because we already recording an episode technically. <laughs> so we end one. Right. Okay. For those of you watching this on YouTube, you need a like. Share. Subscribe. Let's get it. Leave a comment, questions, concerns, dislike if you want to. We don't care. We need to get them likes up. Yes. Also, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and now on Amazon, uh, Music, Audible, whatever it is. <laughs> we could have always been on there. They sent us an email, but, you know, just a, a bot one. We were like, okay, we'll we'll put it on there, too. <laughs> so all the episodes now on there. They'll, oh, Anchor. We'll be putting stuff on Anchor issue with anchor is that um they have a, a memory cap or yeah, a space compression limit yeah, yeah so we some of the longer episodes we're gonna have to figure out how to get them on there but all the ones that we can put on there they'll be up there and at some point in the future the older ones will be on there but y'all probably not listen to those anyway so and the audio is bad <laughs> we didn't know what we were doing okay jordan yes sir what do we do on this podcast we talk about health then well Fitness and finances and everything in between. And we want to make sure you save more and say less. And keep making better your best. Intro, intro, intro. Look at that. I think that, that one's good. It was. That yeah. one's good. Yeah. Okay. What's What else am I supposed to do for an intro? We, uh, normally we talk about errors, but of course this yeah, is... We are errors. This is why I said I need to write the intro down. Errors. Y'all need to like on our stuff so we get our numbers up. Yeah. And then we tell y'all what we do. And I think that's it. Yeah. Okay. We'll do shameless plugs, of course, at the end. Yep. At the end. Yep. Yep. All right. Boom. Locked and loaded. Remember, we have no errors. This is an even number episode. Even number episode. Have no errors. Okay. First fitness question. Wait, 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 wait. you going to skip my theme song. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You ready? Sorry. Is it technically a? We don't have theme songs. We, got, we got some noise. We just got some. It's some noise and Goku yelling. We just got some <laughs> playing before. Because <laughs> mine is the purge. So I guess I, mean, I, mean, I guess it's a theme song for them. But you know, it's not like yeah. Anyway, so um, I feel like if I heard that in the gym though, I would get a little hype. So oh, know. Dragon Ball. Oh, yeah, it works for me. Dragon Ball Z instrumentals are crazy. Yeah. Dude, if you all want to get some hype music, yeah, a Dragon Ball Z instrumentals be insane. Cause when they're not talking and stuff, I mean, look, they be trying to say the, the whole universe. Man, they gotta be turning some multiple different. times. Now, man, if you follow a super, they save in multiple universes. Yeah, look, let me stop. It's crazy. All right. Okay. Yep. You know how we do, y'all. All right. Locked and loaded. All right. That's, that's not supposed to be close. First fitness question. What happens, Jordan? Okay, God, be, be ready for this. Some, some some of y'all out here might get offended by this and not in a hey, we don't this care. is a usually i'll be making bad fitness jokes this is a good one because it's actually about working out but well technically it's not because you know <laughs> and ask the question Corey. Uh, <laughs> what happens jordan if you skip leg day you weak so let me stop <laughs> that's the answer <laughs> oh my god uh, okay good, good good question all right we, we just gonna pop it off off the early okay don't do it that's the that is the answer to the question do not skip leg day all right but now if, if you skip leg day there's a uh, a cornucopia 
of effects. All right. For those who don't know what cornucopia is, it's a wide variety I was gonna of things say, that happen. Episode 19, <laughs> look, verbal gymnastics. Look, we can't do anything right. <laughs> okay. So you said it's a cornucopia. Yeah. Of effects. All right. And most of them are negative. Okay. You do not want to skip leg day. Don't do it. All right. Your legs. Okay. So let's start at the top. Legs are the biggest muscle group in your body. Flat out. Straight like that. Okay. Why would you logically, let's just ingest this for a second. Why would you not want to work out the largest muscle group in your body. Like, I forgot the percentage, but they make up a large, like a, it's a large portion of your body. Like, I mean, biggest clearly means highest percentage, right? Portion of your body, okay? You gotta work it out, have to, okay? What did I call it before? I think it was the, the reverse pyramid effect. You, <laughs> you ever seen the um the meme of like, where it's like 90s kids versus today's kids and what it's like the, the dog that looks like it's on steroids and then it's like the dog is that the Doja dog? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 yeah have, have you on top? Well, we're gonna buy it. Exactly. Have, if y'all skip leg day, y'all gonna look like the like the the, the Doja dog, dog on steroids. Okay. <laughs> don't 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 do that. All right. You need to be um, balanced, which brings us to our first point. If you skip leg day, nine times out of ten, you will be muscular unbalanced, and you do not want to do that. All right. That again leads to other side effects. If you are muscular unbalanced. A lot of times, uh, if you're, you'll notice it when you're doing uh, functional movement patterns, aka walking. All right, <laughs> what's the first thing you do when you wake up, Corey? Other than you know, open your eyes and breathe. As we breathe. said last episode, yeah. I pee for ten seconds. <laughs> but in order to get to the toilet, what you gotta do? Yeah, you gotta walk there. You gotta walk, yeah, man. Sometimes I crawl. <laughs> As if he had, had a great night. Anyway, that's a, that's a, hey, that's a <laughs> synergy in both facets. That was good last night. Why would we be calling on my knees? Don't even make sense. Oh man, he was. <laughs> hey yo, uh, he's leading from the back. So was, anyways, all right, all right, we got really good. We got really good. <laughs> Again, even episodes, oh, we are we, are we already we've already going. We so are going. We don't want track. Okay, muscular imbalance. You have to walk to go to the bathroom in the morning. Yes, okay. So with that being said, it's one of the, you use this muscle group. It's one of the first things you do, okay? And you, so you gotta make sure that you exercise it appropriately so when you are doing functional thing, functional movements. For people who don't know what functional movements are, I'm pretty sure I said this live, I didn't define it before. That's basic everyday activity. So walking, walking up the stairs, um, jogging. Jogging might not technically be considered a functional movement because you, know, you don't have to jog you know on a daily basis but you should um but if you, <laughs> you technically don't have to jog but um uh, your legs aren't just for movement if you're picking anything up uh, let's say you're picking up a, a heavy box that came in the mail off the ground everybody loves amazon you're probably ordering packages that get here in two days um for me i order particularly me particularly i order a lot of workout equipment i actually just bought a jump box uh downstairs for people who don't know that's for plyometric exercises you know the, the boxes that Anyways, you use it, you jump on it, you explode, you know, off the ground and jump on top. It's 60 pounds, all right? In order to get that into my house, I had to use my lower body because you got to lift with your, people always tell you, lift with your legs, not with your back. Yeah, that's that's the thing. Because again, your legs are the biggest muscle group in your body. You need to use your legs, you know, to get it up off the ground. And then you use your core and your back to sustain it once you get it in the air. But you don't lift with your back, you lift with your legs. So saying all that to say, you don't want to have a muscular imbalance, okay? You need to make sure that you're your muscles are are toned and worked out evenly, so they're they're proportionate when you're when you're trying to use them for uh, for functional motions. Um, second reason is a hormone imbalance. Okay, again, your legs being the biggest muscle group in your body, they produce. Let me make sure I get it right. It's HGH, human growth hormone. Okay, for those who don't know what HGH is, that's the stuff that's in steroids. It's illegal for you to take <laughs> um, outside of what is produced naturally. Okay, your your, your legs again, being the biggest muscle group in your body, uh, stimulates your body to be able to produce the largest amount of HGH other than any of the other muscle groups, right? So it is important to allow your body to do that. So HGH um, lengthens your, your anabolic window. I think we talked about this before, but if we didn't, your anabolic window is the ability for your body to absorb nutrients, okay? So it's, a, it's a time period in which your body absorbs the most nutrients. Um, for most, I think I want to make sure I get the time right because I want to go back and contradict myself from what I said from the previous episode. But I, I remember, so I'll correct you. Okay. 
I believe it's a 30 minute window and it's 20, it occurs 20 minutes after exercise. So once you complete the exercise, you have 20 minutes before the anabolic window opens and then you have 30 minutes once it starts before it closes. Is that accurate? Yep. All right. I don't know if it's accurate. That's what you said okay. last time. That's what I mean. When I say <laughs> accurate, that, is that, is that in that, concurrence with what yeah, I said before? That's what you said. Good stuff. All right. <laughs> hey, that's the benefit of me editing the videos. I'll be, I'll be listening hey. to everything over and over again. I'll take it, bro. Look, just keep, keep me straight. As long as right. I'm repeating myself, right. even if I'm wrong, yeah. I'll take it. You, you know don't want to you don't want to say a whole bunch of wrong information exactly. like, like just keep saying no one plus one equals three yeah. but then like, <laughs> four equals five like right. Jesus. until i clean it up in an area section okay it needs to okay. <laughs> um sorry anabolic window that. yes anabolic window. balance hgh thank you um so your, your your body um produces hgh hgh lengthens the, the anabolic window allowing your body to absorb nutrients um, your body absorbing nutrients allows your muscles to grow okay so that that's what you need you need your body to be able to absorb those nutrients and solidify so then to prepare yourself for the next workout your muscles can then continue to grow all right so if you don't for those who are skipping leg day you're cheating your body out of hgh man like your, your own natural steroid let's call it what it is your body's own natural producing steroid you are limiting that by skipping leg day squats are it squats are the I, would, I think I said this last episode, I'm going to continue to say it because squats <laughs> work your entire body when executed, particularly barbell squats. You know, when you when you work them out, you have to use your, your lower body, your core, your back, everything in between to execute a proper, properly executed squat, right, in, in proper form. So that being said, it makes sense why it would produce the, you know, the, the largest amount of HGH because you have to use everything to, to do a squat. And then when you get start putting the weight on there, man, it... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do a squat, come back, then yeah, you'll understand why it, <laughs> why it does what it does. Why we're always talking about it. Squat, do a squat, then, come back. It, <laughs> squats are crucial, man. If you really want to get that work in, you you gotta work some some squats into you. You gotta work a leg day in there first if you're not doing it. But on your leg day, squats have to be on there, okay? Barbell squats, front squats. There's a variety of them. Dumbbell squats, narrow squats. So let me stop. I sound like uh. Like bubble when you talk about shrimp, fried shrimp, boiled shrimp, bubble goo yes, shrimp. Yeah, I did that. <laughs> shrimp. You said, I think you said shrimp, shrimp. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's what I say now. Look, shrimp, man. shrimp. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yes. All right. So we're reeling it back in. So yeah. that's the the second reason why you should not. Or that's what the second reason. The second thing that happens if you skip leg day. So first thing, muscular imbalance. Second thing, lack of uh, HGH, so a hormone imbalance. Third thing. You burn significantly less calories on any other day that is not leg day. So I'm, gonna, I'm always going to chime in, going to plug the, the, the FitFam. Corey, when we have our live workouts, so remember you get challenges throughout the week for people who don't know how Finally Fit works. Always going to, never going to pass the opportunity to plug y'all in real quick. Finally Fit, you'll get weekly workouts. Um, you get two live classes virtually, and then the, the, you get these things called challenges, which are workouts that you get to do on the days that we don't see you live. But for the two classes that we have live, we have an upper body day and a lower body day. You'll know from your, you know, because we track our, our workouts using our, our uh, technology, our watches, um, our Apple watches specifically, or our Fitbits. Um, specifically, which day do you tend to burn more calories? Is it upper body or lower body? I'm not going to lie. Yeah? I don't know. You don't know? <laughs> however, however, it is it's track. I tried to see if it was on my watch. It wasn't on my watch. But I would say this, I'm definitely more tired on Monday, which is leg day. Got it. Definitely more. <laughs> I'll take that. Yeah, I'll yeah, yeah. That. I mean, y'all y'all tell us that though, because when you do upper body, you, you obviously don't move, move as much because you just, you know, just because type of exercises there are. Right, but yeah, right. I mean, yeah, legs, leg day sucks. <laughs> That's why I, I hate y'all for making it on freaking Monday. It, look, you know, but you know why we do that? Yeah, I know why. I'm okay. saying y'all evil. No, no not um, <laughs> yes, but no. <laughs> um, we do it because it sets the tone for the rest of the yeah, week. Like, yeah, you yeah. get the hardest day. So, uh, so I know I'm not going to skip the question. We're talking about what happens if you skip leg day, but I'm also going to plug leg day yeah. into you know why you should have leg day into this question, right? Um, for those who don't know, you want to if you have a leg day, if you don't have a leg day, you need to have a leg day. But if you do have one, you need to plug it on the first day you start exercising throughout the week because it literally sets the tone for your body for the duration of the week, right? You get the biggest muscle group growing, going and going before you start the rest of the the week. Again, you get that HGH going, you widen your anabolic window, and you get the hardest muscle group to exercise or to, you know, to particularly strengthen out the way while you have the most energy. Most of the time, 
on Mondays, if you're following a finally fit schedule and you're coming off your rest day on Sunday, you know, because the only thing you've done is your active recovery, which is, you know, your walking, your yoga, your light swim, whatever your, your resting activity is on Sunday, just to close your rings. And then on Monday, we, we hit it hard. We get those legs, that lower body out of the way because that, that sets the tone for the rest of the week. Everything else after that should be easier than Monday. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. why we get in there. Also, if you've ever done leg day on a Friday and you, you go out that night or the Saturday, Listen. <laughs> you're like, I'm never, I'll never do this again. You're out, you're out here and standing in a bar and your legs is on fire. <laughs> <laughs> so that also being said, <laughs> Because it's the biggest muscle group, it has the largest recovery window. I know we haven't talked about that specifically, like what you know, what muscle groups correspond and how long you, you know, how long you're gonna be sore. But if you've done leg day right, you're going to be sore for at least the next 48 to 72 hours. And okay. then you can't walk. Yeah. <laughs> He's not lying. That's why people don't like doing legs. You've never done it. You're like, bro, I can't walk the next day. <laughs> you ever seen somebody waddling? They probably just had leg day either that day or the day before. It's usually the day after. Most of the time, you're yeah, not two days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're usually not as sore as you're going to be the day of, right? right. Like, you know, it's going to hurt a little bit. When you, it's usually when you give your body time, and we were talking about sleep, when you're getting that six hours of sleep, you wake up the next day. Your muscles have also been dehydrated because, again, you can't consume water while you're unconscious. Shout out to episode 19 um, and 11. Yeah. Episode 19 and 11. We you, deep. We got yeah, a bag. Hey, we got a bag. We got reference points. Hey, now. I love that. Hey. <laughs> hey. Um, but, but yeah, so that being said, you need to make sure you get, get your legs right early in the week, set the tone, and then, you know, from there, everything else should be downhill. Not saying that everything else can't be on par, but nothing should be greater than leg day, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yep. Um, Fourth thing. So, yeah. I'm sorry, we were, I'm just gonna a recap. Yeah, recap. Third, so the third thing was burn less, it, it burns a lot of calories. Okay, my leg days are in terms of comparison to my upper body, I might burn almost 100 to 150 more calories, and that's uh just doing leg hit. If you're doing leg uh strength training, which Seriously. yeah, you're which you means you're under, on that bar, listen, boy, you're here squatting 100 you barbell squats, leg press, clean, uh, clean. <sighs> Yeah, clean, Hang clean snatches, squat, push press. deadlift, deadlift is technically back and lower body, deadlift. but yeah, deadlift. Yeah, yeah if deadlift. you squat clean and deadlift on the same day. That's it, that's all you need. You do those three exercises on a, on a strength training day, yeah, you, you're gonna be tired. You might be done for the week. Like, don't yeah. don't be done for the week, but you might be. And you mess around and totally rep like over 10,000 pounds just because people use the lower body strong in the upper body. Yeah. But yeah, if you, if you repping out, you know, at least 200 on squat, like a buck 50 on clean and three, four, you know, like each where you add all them reps, it starts getting real. <laughs> You're like, bro, I didn't push so much weight today. <laughs> all right. Oh man! All right, fourth thing. Bringing it back around. So the fourth thing that can happen if you skip leg day, you your body will technically be slower, and it'll it'll produce less. It'll have a lower um, rate of force production. Um, so just a review for that term: rate of force production is your body's ability to generate energy to propel itself forward through a functional motion or an exercise, right? So rate of force production means, so when you run, right? For my, my track people out there, for sprinters, you know, and not even just sprinters, anybody who plays a sport, you know, you gotta, you gotta run at an adequate pace. If you try skipping leg day and compare yourself to a friend who's been, you know, hitting their legs consistently and see which one of you guys are moving faster. I mean, honestly, that is as simple as that, right? Muscles, right? If you're, if you're, if you, the, the person who, who is more muscular or who not even just more muscular the person who has been working out their muscles more consistently their lower body more consistently will able be able to generate more force when their feet hit the ground so logically they're going to be able to propel themselves you know faster um when when sprinting or moving forward so by you know by definition you will be slower if you do not do leg day that's not to say that you you know you won't be faster than most people you know some people just have talent you know it, it i know a lot of people who weren't you know necessarily track runners but they were fast right uh, a lot of that has to do with genetics. A lot of that has to do with body makeup. And, you know, some people are still just naturally talented. That being said, I guarantee you they could be faster if they had a leg day. All right. You need to get out, get those, get that leg day in, do those squats, do those lunges, do those, those snatches, those cleans, all that good stuff um, to work on those glutes, work on those hamstrings, work on those calf muscles, work on those quads. Okay. All of that. And they need to be worked in balance to be able to produce a higher rate of force production. Okay. Uh, every time when you sh when you're sprinting, every time your leg strikes the ground, that 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 force comes from your calves, your quads, and your hamstring all at the same time. You know what I mean? Or not all at the same time, but it's it's pushed down through your leg. Okay. So that being said, you can't just work. You can't go out here and have a leg day and just do calf raises and think that you're going to get faster. No, it has to be an even um, an even growth 
of, of the lower body. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you got to work out all those muscle groups that then make up which are um, your lower body. Uh, last but not least is if you don't um, work out your lower body, you have a limited range of motion uh, in, in all behavior, but in particularly functional behavior. So one of the things we were talking about earlier is just being able to walk or being able to lift something. Again, you want to lift with your lower body, not specifically with your back. But if you don't, you know, again, this goes back to what's, what's the first thing in in terms of exercising, uh, what, what do we want to work on first, Corey? So uh, range one. of motion, flexibility. Yeah, exactly. That's the, my guy. See, he's listening, man. I, I, at least I know. At least I know the classes are working. All right. <laughs> so range of motion, stabilization, endurance. Right. So you're working on range of motion. You're working on flexibility. You're working on balance. Right. How can you work on range of motion for your lower body if you don't yeah, work out your lower body? Right. If you're not straight, you know what I mean. Most. Uh, that, that's what y'all be doing. Y'all be out here not budging, trying to make some. <laughs> Oh man! Look, you gotta, you gotta do it, man. Foundational. Exactly, and it's it's the first thing. OPT model, optimization performance training model. You step one: stabilization, endurance. Before you touch a single weight, you don't even need to look at weights technically for the first fourteen days you work out. I'll be honest with y'all. For people who have never worked out before, you could do flexibility, yoga. Uh, stabilization workouts, meaning just working on the balance of your muscles because you need to develop a muscle because chances are if you haven't worked out before, your muscles are undeveloped, underdeveloped. So not even just your prime mover, which are your, you know, the muscles that are used to actually do the, the pushing and pulling in the exercise, but your balance muscles, the, your synergists, the ones that keep you balanced while executing, which people don't realize are absolutely necessary until you're trying to do the exercise. I challenge you, just do a quad stretch, right? That's the where you you're standing on one foot and you're pulling that leg up, but, you know. <laughs> yeah, most of you stay balanced. Most of y'all can't stay balanced like, without without leaning on a wall or, or touching something, right? Because right. your synergist muscles are weak and your lower body. Stop skipping leg day. Look, go up. Do not do yoga in your first 14 days of ever exercise. <laughs> do not do that. You stupid. <laughs> <laughs> let me, let me. Okay, go ahead. I don't know. I was going to say the exercise you sent us for this week. Nah, but see y'all. She put her leg behind her head. <laughs> I was like. Now they know damn well they can't even do this. So Listen. next time I'm gonna need you to send a beginner version. My bad. Cause she she wasn't even um like she was just going like through it. She wasn't saying like I'm, not, I'm like well I'm just gonna stay here because I, I can't do that. My bad. Guys. So, so I, I so it was I, a good one though. It was yes. a good one, but she was she was highly advanced. I try to send y'all a lot from a lot of the same. Different. Yeah. 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 Well, some some of the people are different, but then a lot of them have different like levels. Yeah. And so sometimes. The recommended recommended yeah. videos I think are at the same level, no. but they're not. Hers, um, hers like said beginner yeah. until she put her leg behind her head, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I, yeah, 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 okay. So yeah, that yeah. that being said, I it's not that I wouldn't have you do yoga. You just need to make sure that it is beginner level of yoga. So like that being said, what Corey said, don't put your leg behind. If no. you if you can't touch your toes, your leg ain't going behind your head. It's not working. Even it's, if, it's, even if you work out a lot, you can't do yoga. Good luck. They gonna be laughing because they be you know they be this is I mean this is like a, a known well a well known yoga story you know people think they strong come in and they be tearing them up. Listen, <laughs> yoga is different. I, I challenge if you've never done yoga yeah. before, you need to do it at least one time so you can see what we're talking about. They be like a downward facing dog for thirty minutes in a sauna. Anybody that can hold a full conversation with you, you know what I mean, while doing one of those like half moon poses or you know what I mean, prone cobras or you know what I mean, downward facing dogs or anything. That requires one foot to be down while everything else is in the air. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Those, those people got yoga is the move, as in you, you should incorporate it. But it talking about a, a, a bell curve, it is probably I probably every physical thing. Look, I hmm. encourage I encourage yoga for again for increased range of motion yeah. or flexibility. That being said, there are what they they call them flows. There are different flows. There's one that I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce because I'm not about to embarrass myself. It starts with a Y. Y'all, for my people who do yoga out there, you know what I'm talking about. There's one with the Y and then there's one with the V. Those, those are really real. There's, there's a flow. I'll come back and I, when we clean I'm this up, I eat, look, <laughs> I'll come back when we clean this up in the air section and I'll tell y'all what I'm talking about. But they, yeah, they, they get really real. Okay. No, yeah. Yoga's fun. But okay, though, so you got limited range of motion, so you need to be stretching. Yes. Flexibility. You need to have to. Have to. If you don't even have a leg that you need to be, you need to be doing that. All right. But that's that's definitely, yeah. It, we, we, we bake in yoga at minimum once a week and I finally fit. But we always warm up with dynamic stretching and then we always cool down with static stretching. So you need to stretch, need that flexibility, need that range of motion. Um, so yeah, just we'll, 
we going to stay on that one or? No, I was gonna say you, you want to you recap the five things. Yeah, so let's recap real quick. So what happens if you skip leg day? First thing, muscular imbalance, okay? Your body is gonna be built like an upside down pyramid. Second thing, hormone imbalance, lack of HGH, at lack of HGH, human growth hormone, limited anabolic wi window, meaning your body is limited to the amount of nutrients it can absorb, uh, limiting muscle growth. Third thing, burn less calories. You wanna burn more calories if you're trying to create that caloric deficit. Um, most of you guys are for your goals, depends on what your goal is. Either way, you probably wanna create a healthy caloric deficit, so you need a leg day, preferably at the beginning of your week. Fourth thing, slower, you have a slower rate of force production, uh, so your body will, will actually move slower when running, sprinting, walking, etc. cetera, than somebody who does have a leg day, all right? Not true for all, but true for most, okay? Even people who are fast, they can be faster if they're not, if they don't have a leg day. Last but not least, you will have a limited range of motion um, for functional behavior as well as exercise, okay? So if you wanna be able to put your leg behind your head, <laughs> incorporate that yoga into leg day, all right? Yeah. Back into not skipping leg day, I remember when I I went play flag football. This is like three, four years after high school. I tried to sprint and I fell over myself. <laughs> I tried to like go like top speed, and since I hadn't used those muscles like at that level, I literally fell. I literally fell down. I I I what was I like, eat eat the dirt, eat whatever it is. Eat dirt, yeah. Eat dirt, yeah. It was turf, but still, I I, I was like, oh my, I, mind you, twenty one. <laughs> this <laughs> I swear to God, it's I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it's, you'd be surprised. It's a thing, man. So, yeah. like, I'm going to slide this one in. I know it's, so this is a six, but it's a six exclamation point. Right. Injury prevention, right? I mean, just what Corey said, if you, the, the problem is with, with aging, right? Your brain never, age, your, your brain does technically age. Like, let yeah. me be very clear how I say it. But your cap what your mind thinks you're capable of doesn't age. Your body does, right? So me being 28, I still think I'm capable of what 21 year old, I'm sorry, probably 20, 21 year old football playing Jordan can do. In my head, I still run a four or five, right? And so you get out there and then you try to do it and your body literally hurts itself in the process yeah. because you, you don't forget the form, you don't forget to how, you know, your, your brain still tells your body how to execute, right? How to pick your feet up and put them down. You know what I mean? So in your head, you're still trying to generate the same amount of force. You know what I mean? You're, 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 you're on your toes, you're executing, you're chopping through, right? I'm air dynamic, because I've, I've been playing sports for years. These are things I know how to do. However, I'm not built the same anymore. My muscles are not the same size. Or they're not, at least right now, they're currently not capable of doing that, right? I'm more of a, a lean stamina endurance build right now. I would say I, I'm still pretty fast. I'm not four or five fast. Let's be very clear. I'm 28. You know what I mean? If I, if I, run, if I run a four or five, I ain't doing nothing else the rest of the day. That's it. Hamstring. Look. <laughs> Look. I'll never sprint again unless it's life saving. I will never pull out sprint again. <laughs> That's why, like, I be trying to get my mile time down. It's like I'm not, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I got, I'm getting my, you know, I'm gonna keep this pace for right. the rest of my life. I'm about here full sprint again. <laughs> you know how much energy it takes to to run as fast as you possibly can and not fall down. I, Apparently, a lot, a lot, <laughs> uh, a whole lot. Bro. I used to, I used to sprint as fast as I could every day, all the time, <laughs> multiple times a day, multiple times a day. <laughs> <laughs> Quick burst, what I mean, all the same. They're not over yeah. here. I, I challenge any of my adults to just. You don't even gotta. <laughs> You don't even have to do the sprint. Remember the last time you sprint, and then just tell, put it in the comments below on YouTube or on the podcast. Just tell us when was, how many years ago was the last time you really sprinted a hundred percent, even if it was just for you know ten seconds. You know, yeah. The last time was probably two thousand seventeen. Exactly, it wasn't, it wasn't a flag game. I scored, it was for me to score a game with a touchdown. <laughs> yeah, sideline four guard playing. Don't play with me. Look, but, uh, what's hey, it Brett Young. The one like, thing I did do is I do run fast. Now don't mess with me. But I, mean, I, I said I said did 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 past tense because I'm, I'm gonna beat by anybody probably now. But yeah, that's last time about four years. I'm never if I'm about to die, I'll never do it again. I will say I did it last week. I read, so okay. Hey, I, I, I be I be testing, you know, ego. Yeah. <laughs> see, what, see, you know, you see, what, you see what I can do. Listen, uh, okay. So when, when I walk, so for those who don't know, my dog's name is Pharaoh. When I walk him outside, right, and it's in the evening, I let him off the leash on the way back. You know, because he know at this point, but it's, re it's repetition. He knows where we live at, so I don't got to worry about him running away. But I, I race. <laughs> My dog, you know, it's, it's from the stop sign to my house. It's, a, it's at least a good, you know, it's a 40, 50 yard. So, yeah, I'd I, I, I mean, I be kicking it. So, yeah. last week I, I did that. And needless to say, the dog beat me. Okay. I bet he did. Look, Farrell, we get, <laughs> got four legs. Farrell gets loose, bro. Yeah. yeah and that. he's three. So, yeah. at three in our years, was that 21 and dog? 21. Yeah. Yeah. So, he's, either way, he's, he's still, still young. young. Yeah. yeah. Nah, I'm talking about 100, 100 yards plus, though. Oh, yeah. yeah never. Nah. I'll never do that. <laughs> Straight. Oh no, last it. summer. Last summer okay. we were doing the fitness journey. We were doing uh wind sprints. But yeah, again, not really different though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, boom, see so we took up a whole time with that. All right, do you have anything else for what happens when you skip leg day? No, sir. That's okay, it. real quick though. Plug it in. Do 
Yeah. The leg day. So what? Break my teeth. So how long does it take, like, for the people who you can tell who at, who do work out a lot, but right. they skip leg day? How long does it take to reproportion your body? You what do you mean to catch it up? Yeah, like you know, they be all. It depends. <laughs> it does because it, I mean, it really depends, right? Because some people are like, I mean, it depends on what level yeah. you're doing. Yeah, like upper body, yeah, how right? much they're. Yeah, yeah, because like some people really go ham on their upper body, which makes even less sense on why you would skip leg day. Because why? Because your body, your legs got to carry. Right? Yeah, like <laughs> so muscle. Okay, so we I think we covered this before too, but muscle is more dense than fat. It's not heavier. But why would you want to make your entire upper body look like Arnold Schwarzenegger when he was a Terminator, and then you know the bottom, your bottom look like SpongeBob legs? Like imagine that. Just picture that, right? That's what that's what half of y'all look like when y'all skip leg day. Like real real talk. You know what I mean? So you, you don't want to do that. So to answer your question, I it, you know, it, it, yeah. it extremely bears. It I was just wondering if there was like something you had learned from your uh, certification stuff. Nah, yeah. honestly, you would probably just have to. I would recommend if you're really that unbalanced or unproportionate, you probably should scale down on the upper body, upper body. and then catch up on the lower body. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yep. Yeah, I don't know what that means. <laughs> hey, stop. It did. Is it still recording? No. The time's, the time's not moving. Okay, I'm gonna save. I'm just gonna do it again. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna save it real quick. I just had that video. I don't know what the fuck that was. So for our viewers on YouTube, uh, yeah, it right, we, had it. Yeah. We, we don't know what to do this time. This is this a new new technology yeah, issue? We got something about power. I've never seen that one before. It's a C1, right? Yeah. We got space. I, I checked before. We had, we had 12 gigs when we started. All right, y'all, we don't know what happened, but we're just starting back up again. Yeah. So you know what you're saying? Uh, Bro, I was just stop. We're talking about oh, skip, uh, skipping leg day and how your body's going to be all proportional. Yeah, so I was saying you need to you need to probably de-escalate your upper body workout and you need to escalate your lower body workout until they're, you know, about even and then you can scale up proportionately together, right? If anything, if you want to be a bodybuilder, bodybuilders, again, when you enter a bodybuilding competition, they don't got skinny legs and big upper bodies. They got big <laughs> legs and big arms, right? Yeah. Big chest, big back, all that. So, again, yeah. that being said... Allocate time for both, okay? All right, boom, all good? Yes, sir. On to, I hope it didn't speed it up real fast. It's not an album chip <laughs> Okay, on to the finance, finance section. section. Let's go. We should at least took down the air. So we don't. I don't know. What did it say? It ran out of power. Yeah, it's not something about deactivating power. Plugins. We got. We don't have plug no plugins. Listen. What? Stop playing with us. Yeah, bro, yeah Stop playing okay. with us. All right. Boom. On to. <laughs> <laughs> on to the finance section. Okay, this is the budgeting episode. However, we have a finance question, so you know we do the questions first. So can you read that? If I can. Gotcha. So first finance question. So this one is a viewer related question. Thank yes. you, viewer, for your for your question. All right. First, it reads, what are your thoughts on buying a new car from a dealership versus a hand-to-hand -hand private sale? Obviously, new cars are bad investments in general because of the immediate decrease in value, but buying through dealership does come with a slight security that you don't get with a private sale. What are your thoughts? That's it. Yeah. Um I don't know what the question is. Oh, my bad. <laughs> I just read it to you. you I know, you know, I still got to look at it. You know me. You know, my, you know, my short-term memory is still being worked I, on. I thought you, you know, normally you'd be pulling out points and stuff. I thought you had already... Oh, uh, no, I didn't pull out any points. It okay. literally just says to scroll down to the bottom for this question. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, buying a new car. Let's say I would not buy a new car. That's what my, that's my first recommendation, should I say. <laughs> Let me say this. I, I said I already bought. I bought. I I purchased a new car before, right? You know, like I said, it's on my. I already said it before. We know. So I've done this. So I have extreme experience with it. <laughs> this is before the we were. I guess the catalyst before you know we started getting our finances in order. Right. Yeah, as you said, you take the crazy. Before we were wealth conscious. Yeah, wealth conscious. Yeah, you take the crazy depreciation. However, to my knowledge, you're not taking no depreciation. <laughs> <laughs> like I mean, and you should not do this. However, if there was ever a time to buy a new car and withstand some of the depreciation, it, it would be now while the um, this there's still a semiconductor shortage. So the, uh, to my knowledge, cars are not depreciating 
and the used ones that people already own like new cars on the lot aren't depreciating and neither are the used ones that they sold like because the they still have let's say you know the 2020s from last year like it's, it's still a new car and they got the 2021s even though you know it's less stock they just they just got the car just sitting there and it's not to my knowledge my car my car has appreciated in value my car was my car was worth roughly nineteen thousand dollars around this time last year now it's worth like 24. This is the first time yeah. I think non-classic, non-collectible cars yeah, non -collectible have become yeah. appreciating assets. Yeah, all, all cars appreciate except the collectible ones. So this is a rare time. But obviously, as I always say, adjusted for COVID, I would not buy a new car. Well, let me say this: it's not that you should not buy a new car. I'm more concerned with the dollar amount. I think I told you before, talking about you know getting a new car. I mean, because you can buy a thirty thousand dollar car and it be used, right? I mean, so for me, it's more of the dollar amount and less of the hit and depreciation you take from the asset because regardless the depreciation is going to occur and if you're gonna quote unquote always sell the car ten thousand dollars and you're gonna always buy a thirty thousand car that's twenty thousand dollars of depreciation regardless it doesn't it doesn't matter how fast it happens right this goes back to planning though right actually having a plan I am of the, I wouldn't get a loan. There we go, okay, I knew, I knew there was something I don't fold on. I would not get a car loan, however y'all gonna get one. So, you know, how do I, we had a discussion earlier. So. Go ahead. And I was gonna say, you know, you gonna say I was gonna say, y'all be out, say I'll be choosing violence. I, I don't be knowing what y'all want me to say sometimes. I don't, I say, I wouldn't recommend getting a car loan. Then you want me to help you get a car loan. Okay, how do you get the car loan, Corey? If you are, you know, if you are gonna get the car loan, no, don't get it. Don't get you're it. gonna get. <laughs> yeah, to think about it, his brain said. Oh hell no! <laughs> I don't recommend getting a car loan on a depreciate. Uh, excuse me, a loan on a depreciating asset, which which a car is. However, you're gonna get a car loan. I mean, literally less than twelve months. Like you got to pay that joint off fast. But again, again, proper planning prevents poor. Uh, proper planning prevents for performance yeah. there we go i knew it had to start with a p yeah I so yeah <laughs> you you know you're going to need a new car and the great thing about all the great thing about cars and they go down in value all cars have a value because at worst case you can take it to the junkyard and get some money for the parts so it's not like you know you can you you outsell it at a loss, but you can always get some money out of car but usually your car is worth a couple of thousand dollars and you usually know roughly about two to three years in either you, when you want to get a new car that's your car to act up like okay i gotta get a new car that's when you should start preparing and saving for a new car you can either save for it you know cash as far as in a savings account how you'll save account or which i recommend you do you you should be investing this money so it's even less money that you have to spend that's that's what i'm talking about so you get out of debt see i i already answered this i've already said this before i've already said this before I've already said this before. You can, if you already, once you pay off your debt, you're just gonna have a couple thousand dollars in discretionary income. You just grind for two, three months, two, three years ahead of time, put that in, boo or spy, and then th that's your car. You just let it appreciate in the market. And then you sell that, you sell it once it appreciates, you're paying long-term capital gains. You made that one-time investment two, three years ago. You're over to 366 days for the long-term capital gains. So you're gonna pay 15% on it. And then, by the way, if you if you have ten thousand dollars, fifteen percent of that is one thousand five hundred dollars. You got eighty five hundred dollars, and your car is worth three four thousand dollars. I mean, you got you, my members. That's the one thing too. Y'all be missing it. What your car is worth? That's the that's the cost of the car that you're driving. Don't don't get it twisted when you total your car, and so you get the same one. If you're driving a three thousand dollar vehicle, it is a significant upgrade to a ten thousand dollar car. <laughs> And that's the one thing too is I experienced. I had a 2006. I went from 2006 to 2018. And night, night. The tech is the tech is so crazy in cars now. So if you're if you're driving a car that is really now, I would say maybe two, three years old, because they they redo the models as well. Like it's just you know like the, my mom has a 2016 Honda Accord, I think, mm -hmm. and I have an 18, and the 17 was is the same as her car. But my my car is completely different. You see the new Accords, they're completely different than the ones like before. So they be changing the generations out on them too. So like it's a, a lot of now with the tech in cars so crazy, a lot of stuff changes. But again, respectfully, if you want if you're going to get a 20, 25, 30 thousand dollar car, you gotta have some money. Like your, your car, I am on the Dave Ramsey logic on the no more than 50% of your pre tax income in vehicles. But like if you make, like put it like this, say you make a hundred thousand dollars, 
in my eyes, you should not have a $50,000 car <laughs> at all. The maintenance is too high. That's what I look at too mainly. How much is the maintenance? And that's what this question was about too because, um, what is it? A uh, bad investment. But yes, a, a higher security risk. They put it like this, either the car does or doesn't work. Like when they made it, you know, obviously some cars don't work even when you buy them new. I wouldn't recommend getting the manufacturer uh, insurance on it, you know, the, the warranty, all that type of stuff. Because again, for me, it should, that's gonna sound very, uh, not cocky, but you should have, it shouldn't, it shouldn't take, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be a lot for you to get a new car. If you buy a car, then the car you have blows up a, a month later. That's what you have an emergency fund for. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, remember, Cars, their main purpose is to get you from you know, point, a to point, point A to point B. So, and for those of us who like, the, you know, your high school, college car, look, man, I just need this joker to go. <laughs> <laughs> I like the fact that I have heated seats and I have Apple CarPlay and it can charge my phone. They got remote engine start. Dang, I'm stuck a little bit. And all <laughs> this other stuff. <laughs> hey, look. Hey, my but, car still got an aux cord. I ain't even yeah, mad at yeah, it. You know, yeah, mine got, mine. yeah, mine got two USB ports in it, right? You know, mine, you turn the... You turn the knob down to cool for the AC, it goes blue. You turn it to the right to make it hot, it goes red. Like, you know, I'm glad I got all that type of stuff. However, my not this car, but my previous car, they have died on me when I am driving them. <laughs> they turned off <laughs> mid-drive. Have you ever for the, have you ever had to restart your vehicle when it was while you on? Yeah. But y'all, you you lose the power steering. You keep the brakes, thank God, but you lose the steering. Yeah. That joint lock up on you. Yeah, I've so, never had that happen before. That's a scary feeling. So, and people know me. I have cracked. You know, I, I have totaled a vehicle. So, you know, I'm th I'm I'm thankful that you know it can go 60, 70 miles an hour. That's you know if you had that experience for. Which most people usually had. You usually got a beater. You know, your first one or two cars. But yeah, I would say for me, and I'm just saying for my like, I'd be hard. I would say anything over 30 percent of your pre tax in a vehicle. That's just too. That's just too much money. And again, too though. Again, talking about wealth building. You can, you can, cars, you're going to need another car. So like for me, I said, I would say we don't shop, we make purchases. If you're not going to get the car you want, then get the you know cheapest car from a financial standpoint. It's obviously, you know, needs to run, but you know, low maintenance, high gas mileage. If you're not going to get the car you want, I mean, cause that, that's what I did. Even though I spent, you know, $33,000, I got the, I got the car I wanted. The only thing that's not in my car is a sound system. That's about it, and a GPS. But them GPSs, you gotta update, cost money, so I have to have a car play so it's straight. But everything in my car that I wanted for my previous car, I got. So that that's the one thing too. But again, smart goals. Have a goal what you want for your next vehicle. I did like six months of research before I bought my car. Every day, I, yeah. like, like so that, that's so you, you gotta spend thirty. If you're about that's and that's the thing, y'all wanna invest. Remember I said you don't, you want to invest, eventually you want to invest more and more money each month and each year. You start making investments in the thousands, tens of thousand dollar range, you got to do your research with that type of stuff. So yeah, I mean, I understand though the security of going to the dealership versus, you know, buying it from someone else. But you know, if someone wanted to buy my car for me, it would be used. But it's like, I take my car to the dealership. I know that's more expensive for my maintenance, but it's like, and I bought it, I mean, obviously it's new, so I bought it from the dealership. But it's like, I mean, it is, I mean, you, you drive too, bro. <laughs> like, you know, I mean, you hope to be, I mean, you got Carfax and stuff like that now. But again, like I said, I'm more concerned with how much money you're spending, me, not whether or not you should get a new one or a used one. I think 30% is, is a little too much, but that would be the most I would do. That 50% number is for household income. So obviously if you're married, you have two vehicles, right? So you scale it up. So I, I'm okay with 50% if you're married because you have to have two cars, but you, know, you have kids, SUVs, trucks are more expensive. But if you're single and you got no kids, 30% max. And that's assuming you ain't got no debt and you invest in like crazy in your emergency fund in place. But if you need a new car, if it's time to get a new one, cancel everything that's not necessities and debt, pay, <laughs> debt payments, <laughs> grind for a couple of months, and then flip that joint. That's the one thing with cars too. And then especially now, this is always the case with used cars. But used cars values don't go down that much because the depreciation has already already occurred. So if you got if you're looking at you know say a 2015 with 50,000 miles and then you put 10,000 miles on it, so let's say you look at a 2014 with 60,000, that's the same difference you get at 2015 and drive another year on it. The price isn't that much different, so you can calculate your uh, depreciation right then and there. 
it might be a thousand dollar difference. So it's not that much money in a car that's over a thousand dollar purchase. Then in that time, you save up money, right? Let's say you got an average car payment of five hundred dollars. So if you get a new car, right, that's six thousand dollars. So you get an eight thousand dollar car right now, right? Then you save five hundred dollars for a year, right? And your car worth seven plus six that you save for five hundred. Now you can get a thirteen thirteen thousand dollar car. But again. You have got to put in that work and you might have to drive a car from an appealing standpoint that you can't post on social media. I don't know what y'all want me to say. You want to post a car on, <laughs> on Instagram. That's, there's, a, there's a certain level of mental maturity that has to happen to you right. to be able to undergo this process, right? Like it, you got, I agree with Corey, get what you want in accordance with what you can afford, yeah. right? But at the same time, like if my, I, already, I mean, Corey and I, I think we've talked about this before, I know I've definitely talked about it with V. If my my Camaro goes out, man, look. Yeah, I, yeah we, we said that we like we don't even know what next car we're I'm, getting. I don't even know. Like, right. <laughs> it might be a two, three thousand dollar whip. It, it might, for real. Because I, I mean, I gotta get from point A to point B. The stuff that yeah. I like when I bought my and don't get me wrong, I like. I mean, we like nice cars. We like nice things in general, right? But the stuff that I like when I bought my Camaro is not the same stuff that's important to me now, right? Exactly. I've, I've matured financially. I've matured, you know, what I mean, just wisdom yeah. wise, right? Like I know more than you know. 2016 Jordan. Yeah. You realize you, know? you realize what you can you can do with that money. Exactly. And then you know, obviously since the goal, obviously the, the purpose of all cars, first thing is for it to work, which is driving you from point A to point B. And after that, it's like how much more money right. do you you know? And so like for, I mean, like I said, I paid, you know, thirty my car was thirty three thousand dollars. Everybody knows me, my dream car is an Audi. I could have gotten an Audi. Now I couldn't have got the Audi I wanted, but out out you can get an A four and they can get the S four. Right. You can get the Audi for 30, 30, 30 racks. Like so when it comes to spending a lot of money on a car, I did it. I did a lot of research. I was looking at cars up in that 40K range, 50K range, um, which I'm glad I did not do. <laughs> I'd be, I mean, it'd been good now because my income went up, but you know, my goodness, yeah, my yeah, goodness. Yeah. I, I saved, that's yeah, I was going to get, you know, Acura's a luxury brand for a Honda and the, the TS, the, um, the TL, it's not called TL no more, I think, but same thing. That's like the luxury version of the Accord. Mm -hmm. Man, it was like $20,000 for the same car, but like less tech. <laughs> I was like, no. And like the Accord is the flagship car for Honda, like, you know, and Acura technically too. Like that's the stuff they put everything in. Right. So I was like, man, let me get this with. <laughs> Anyways though, yeah, as far as let's uh, go to the last part about a private sale. I mean, you, you can't get a new car on a private scale. I mean, private sale so that kind of contradicts the question about getting a new car if you're gonna get a used car I, you I would probably get a private sale but again if you're a mechanic member team building let's see member for <laughs> I think I'd be covering myself first thing I recommend is building a team and mechanic was on there so you know either have a local mechanic you can take it to or you know your own you know you do car stuff yourself or you know if you have a friend and they can you know check out the, the car for you to make sure you know it's looking all it's looking all good. I mean, cause just think about if you were selling your car to someone, it's like, bro. I mean, I drive it like everybody else. You live in Maryland, the, the road be bumpy places. <laughs> like I don't know what you want me to say. And then, um, just, okay, no, just small interjection. Things I was thinking about while Corey was talking about the financial, you know, uh, ramifications of both sides. Things that aren't necessarily related to finances, but you do need to consider legal ramifications, right? I think there are different. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. I think there are different sets of rules for private sales versus sales from directly from a dealership. So I think you gotta make sure by law what you can yeah. and cannot take it, you know what I mean, what you can and cannot return the vehicle for, you know what I mean? You, you gotta consider those when making that, when making the purchase. Right, when you do, when you're, and that's why I said, because your private sale is not a new car. I mean, you know, it's a used car. Right. So someone else already owns it. Yeah, you do a private sale and let's say they got a loan on that car. You better, they, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. You gotta go, um, you have to more thoroughly go through the paperwork process for a private sale because if they still have a lien against it, it's not their car. Right. So you you say they sell the car for five thousand, they got a loan on it for ten. That's not that's not your car. Right. <laughs> yes, you got to be more careful with the private sales from a financial standpoint too, as far as actually getting ownership um, of the vehicle. Yeah, I mean, we, if you would buy it from the dealership, I mean, I said dealerships is up price, but again, for me and I spend more on cars. Like that's the thing I spend more money on just overall and maintenance. Again, like I said, I'm more concerned about the price. Like if you if you make 100K, you wanna spend 20K on a car, I do not care if it's new or used. Me, personally, I don't my, I don't have any financial parameters on strictly getting a new or used vehicle. Mine are more set on how much it costs and obviously putting that maintenance into your budget. Like put it like this, let me say this, do not get a 20K Mercedes. That's like, that's saying like, and you, and you make, 
You, you can't afford. <laughs> they have those. So look, I had to think about what you just said. They, they make twenty k Mercedes. No, it's used. Uh, okay. That's what most All people right. drive. They be thinking they slick. Like, they be thinking they slick. Most people in a luxury vehicle is used. It's like four or five years old, and it costs less than my Honda. <laughs> 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 no, real talk, baby. You know, it's twenty. You can you can see them. You know, they they anywhere from like fifteen to like twenty five. Now, obviously, they're more expensive ones. But yeah, most people are whipping about twenty seven thousand dollar used. You know, Benz, uh, BMW, and that car payment about two hundred dollars. Remember, tell her here. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, never mind. Anyways. <laughs> I would also just recommend making a basic list of your requirements for the vehicle. Again, yes, the, the basic, smart goals, goals, yeah. Basic requirement is what it has to go from point A to point B. If your car can't do that, by definition, I don't even think it's is it a car at that point? Like, no. if, if it can't transport you from point bike. A to point B, it's a heavy bike. You be out here, Fred Flintstone in that joint. Look at it. <laughs> yeah, but that, but so yeah, but that, but do it. <laughs> nah, yeah. So that that's the one thing with you know doing private a private sale. Either I say either the vehicle is you know when they made it when it came off you know the assembly line either you know stuff is uh, you know is defective but most it's like saying you buying a used cell phone like most stuff you know they have a a very high you know ninety nine percent threshold uh, for making things correctly so yeah I would be more focused on the dollar amount I would say if you can keep it towards ten percent and that's how much money you're like i said your car worth five thousand and you spend ten days you get a fifteen thousand dollar car remember your car is an asset i know it goes down but you can sell it and get get cash out of it and put that towards the next car now let me be very clear don't go out here um rolling over negative equity in the vehicles mm. jesus 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 your car worth 10k no your, your car is worth 10k yeah you got a 15k loan on it and you sell it and then you'll get another loan for twenty thousand don't do no that. Sense. Don't do that. But the reason you're doing that is you don't got no money. Your credit score low. So, <laughs> again, no opinions here. That's what I'm saying. I'm not choosing violence. I'm telling the truth. That's what I'm saying. All right. Yeah. I mean, I mean play, play with you. What were you going to play? Nah, you going to do, bruh? Uh, no. Nah, I was going to say they, they accounts like. <laughs> <laughs> Dying. Okay, yeah. So that uh, that's that's what I would do for uh, getting a car. Private sale versus... um doing from the dealer obviously like i said private sale is always used so you have that risk like i'm saying make sure you know the title is clean all of that when you go into the dealership um you know it's quote unquote safer but like i said i wouldn't recommend getting the warranty so it really don't matter um anyways but again, like i said my parameters aren't on new versus used mine are more so if you're single i mean 30 percent is like being you know nice like you know okay you can get you can get your car but um if you're married, then yeah, I'm around that 50% range. I don't recommend taking out debt. If you are gonna take out debt because y'all grown, do what you want, I would say you'd be able to pay it off in 12 months. If you don't pay it on 12 months, again, how many deviations do you want from the plan? And all, I've also said, please explain to me uh, taking out a loan on a depreciating asset. So this is the budget episode. You wanna put the car payment you know, in your budget? Go ahead. <laughs> okay, we got one follow-up question real quick because we uh, that was a listener question. And now we got a question from, who y'all think this question is from? Jordan. <laughs> Do you see it? Is it it's yeah, right. the one at the top right above. It's okay. Okay. It says, how to prioritize the wants in your budget. Um, in, in parentheses, it says pre-discretionary income. This is your question? I don't remember. You don't remember? I don't, I don't, if I, it's not mine. Huh. Maybe I did type it. It might have been a while back. We yeah, looked. it was a while back. For those who don't know, we load questions up. Yeah, we, 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 we've had a lot of your questions. So, And yeah. like I said, we do a short episode, so... <laughs> for answering less questions, this question's probably freaking May. Um, you so know it's bad if neither one of us recognize yeah. it, but we you know it's not a guest question. So, <laughs> how to prioritize what's in your budget pre discretionary income? Okay, let's define discretionary income. People are like, dang, Corey talking slow and you got eight minutes. So, let's define discretionary income. Um, remember, I also said I needed was two. Okay, so. Um, Discretionary income is obviously money you have after your discretion, but that would be money that isn't for your necessities, obviously. It isn't for your debt. Debt is a necessity as far as in your budget, but you need to pay your debt. As I said before, they're going to take stuff, and on top of that, your credit score is going to go into oblivion. So let's say you make $4,000, right, and your necessities and your debt totals, if you have debt, $2,000 for easy math, right? Mm -hmm. So you would have $2,000. And discretionary income right so how do you prioritize what's in your budget pre-discretionary income that's why i said you should ask this i already said this financial house yeah i said no i think i said the wants that's why the, i said oh the, the wants. wants so like oh i think it's wants. everything after you pay uh, i see what you're off. saying okay. it's starting to come back to me now right yeah that's what i'm saying i was like what okay let yeah. me say this 
Um, so like all the stuff that's considered yeah. luxury, you know what I mean? Yeah. Lifestyle. Um, you don't have any wants outside of your discretionary income. All of your wants are underneath your discretionary income. Cause that's how I was saying. I was like, I haven't answered this question and it's not related to the question. It's like, <laughs> it, it uh, debunks it or whatever you want to call it. Gotcha. Yeah. Your wants are underneath your discretionary income. There are no such things as having a want that isn't discretionary income because it, you, it's a want. So you don't need it. Therefore, it's something you're getting at your discretion. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, put it like this. What is a want that wouldn't be something that's discretionary income? Nothing. No, actually, I know what it is. No, okay, okay, hold on. Let me, okay. let me, let me get it right. Yeah. So, when I say prioritize the want, so, like, everything that you're trying to buy with your discretionary income is extra. So, like, if I want to buy some purchases on Amazon, or mm -hmm. I want to, you know, go to the movies, or I want to buy the subscription mm -hmm. or something like that, is there a certain order that these, these things that I don't need, that I know I don't need, should be in? Like, your discretionary income. I know you get to spend it at your discretion, mm -hmm. but, like, are should you there be some general, type, Yeah, should there be some type of structure to the things that are outside of your financial house? No, that's that's, that's what I'm saying. Okay. I be I be spending money out here. Necessities, debt payments, investments, lifestyle. It's not my fault. Y'all don't have no money for the lifestyle. No. That's the violence right there. <laughs> that's bullshit. I I am a sp if you let's be clear. If you have ever been around me when I have spent any money, regardless of how much money I have I have made in my life, yeah. <laughs> I am a Clarence throwing the bag before he had a bag to throw. <laughs> Hold on. That, that's, what that's what I'm saying. People think I'm a saver. I was making $40,000 pre-tax and bought a $33,000 car. What, what the hell are y'all talking about? I be, Look, I am spend money any way I can spend it. I don't do that no more. But I, if I got a car now that was 75% of my pre-tax, that would be outrageous. Yeah. But um, no, yeah, I'm I'm all about the lifestyle. I mean, Jordan and I were to showcase theater. We go to strip club. Like, so I, over here, yeah, you can spend it any way. This question is really when you're married. <laughs> yeah. If you're single, you don't have to worry about it. You just spend how you spend it. So um, I would say you need to rate things in order of how much they actually benefit you. Meaning, let's say you're talking about like entertainment, right? right? Let's say you're single and you're not trying to mingle. Put that at the bottom. <laughs> Put that at the bottom. And by me, I mean actually spend money go down on dates. You know what I mean? I heard acting all wild. I was I talking about I got you. Yeah, yeah I'm talking about the pandemic out here playing with A's. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um but yeah, if you're hey, I'm protected bro. So yeah. Say. Hey, wait till that get out of death. That's yeah. gonna look, that's coming out to air. Look, we um, when I get caught up, there's gonna be some stuff on there. But yeah, this is more so if you're married, because if you're single, you don't, you know, it's just you. I, you know, all the favorites say I and you just you know, you can only yell at yourself about it. Gotcha. So if you're married when you're uh, prioritizing things. Like I said, don't get on the same page. Don't get on the same page with finances with your fiance. You know, on the same page with other, I mean, with your spouse. Get on the same page with finances with, with your fiance. Hold on. Yeah, exactly. Right. Clarity. Don't, we're talking. don't don't get on the same page when it comes to finances with your spouse. Get on the same page when it comes to finances with with your fiance. Do you not go. marry someone who you're not on the same page when it comes to your finances with. So when it comes to you know you guys deciding your discretionary income, one y'all get the same amount. So let's say you know y'all each get a hundred dollars, okay. right? Y'all would not say what they can, quote unquote, spend the money on each month. Before you get married, you would agree upon what y'all generally can spend things on. Okay. Because remember, we already budgeted the dollar amount. So that's already agreed upon. We get the same amount. And then, you know, man, if you like going to the strip club and your fiance don't like you doing that, depending on how much you like going to the strip club, you might need to reconsider if you're going to marry her or not. Same, same thing. Same thing with ladies. All right, here we go. Disrespect your hair and your nails. I mean, up to, there's a there's a dollar amount cap about how much how much y'all make. And when you want to get the you know the nice ones done, right? You know you you know what's the what's the dollar amount cap? You know you're spending on that. But that will come like uh, prioritizing your morals and things of that nature uh, when you're married. You know y'all agree upon the dollar amount. Y'all have the same dollar amount. And then if, you know say you got you know twenty things you can spend. You know as long as you hit one of them twenty. It don't matter how you prioritize them. Because one thing with discretionary income, and most people don't reach this point, like from a sustainability standpoint, mm -hmm. it don't, it don't, there's all, you should always spend or you should enjoy your money. You got put in the work where you got money to enjoy. Right. But you should always enjoy your money. But that, I mean, it's it literally, it's wasted money. I mean, it's, you're, you're buying memories. I mean, you know, so do things that you actually want to experience. Like I said, with getting the car. If you want a Ford and you, and you, and you buy, and you buy a Toyota, I don't know what you want me to say. I would recommend not buying the Toyota if you want the Ford. So if you want to, you know, go to the movies, then then go to the movie. Then go to the movies, God. right? You know, if you and you know, if you'd rather go to the movies and watch Netflix, then prioritize going to the movies in your budget over Netflix. Like this is se se second thing I recommend. <laughs> to make 
Gotcha. Like, you got to understand how you work personally and like, you know, you enjoy doing what you're doing. Someone like me, I like getting Vanguard and Fidelity notifications that my broker's transaction executed. So <laughs> I don't got no discretionary account. That's why I said I can't date nobody. Cause I'm like, look, I got to stop. I gotta put some less money in investments. <laughs> That's happened this week. I got some notifications from both of them back to back. I was like, why am I happy right now? <laughs> yeah, you can. You can prioritize your wants, but they're wants. So again, you're on a budget, no debt, right? You remember, you know, remember, you know got gotcha. you. Remember well. Yeah, this is definitely Let's, this is definitely yeah. a a, a yeah. step, well, a baby step three, four. Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. So now, see, if you got all this debt and all this type of stuff, then yeah, I would say don't do it anyway. But you know, if you got a thousand, two thousand dollars that y'all can spend every month, and you already have your emergency fund in place. You define how you want to handle debt and you handle it that way, and you're properly funding your retirement. Then th that's that's what you want to get to. Where you, I mean, you might want to do charity, all these type of things. Yes, I'm pro that, and you got you got to reach that point where you either decrease your outgo and or decrease your income to mm -hmm. reach that. But I mean, y'all be out here respectfully. Y'all be out here your cash, not what you put on a credit card, but like let, like two three hundred dollars. <laughs> I mean, like, put it like this, prioritize it how? I don't know. I go back to uh, last week on episode uh, 19 about you got $300, you spent 80 on chilies. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have no discretionary income. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, you actually have to have some money to actually, you know, to prioritize things. Because then, cause then, like I said, you end up skim skimping on some things. Gotcha. So, yeah, that's it for that. Lock and load it. Let's go. We're almost there on the dot. Okay. Yep. Yep. All right. So let's wrap it up. All right. Yep. So yours. Uh, what happens Why if you skip system? leg day? A lot of bad stuff. What is the overall solution to this? Don't skip leg day. All right. That's my recap. I'm not even about to go into the details of what okay. happens. Don't skip it. All right. First but no, nah, I will say. So <laughs> a lot of <laughs> okay. <laughs> Contradicting myself right then and then. A lot of bad stuff happens. Muscular imbalance, hormone imbalance, limited range of motion uh, for functional behavior, less sperm calories, and slower or less uh, rate of force production. Okay. So what does that mean? Incorporate leg day into your workouts. Right, and then for mine, uh, buying the car from the dealership slash getting a private sale. Look, I don't I don't care where you buy. Obviously, you want, I want the car to work. You know what I mean? Like buying a car is all. There's always that risk in that. That's why car fast is out now, right? But um, I would say, regardless if you get a newer used, I'm not that big on the depreciation because you don't spend twenty thousand. You can get a twenty thousand dollar new car and you can get a twenty thousand dollar used car. Obviously, the new one's gonna depreciate faster than the used one for the twenty thousand dollars. At the end of the day, if you're going to drive the car till it's worth 2000 in both cases, that's called an $18,000 loss, to my knowledge. I think that's how the math works. But, you know, like, I mean, if you're going to, if you're going to you know, drive your car till it dies, you, the depreciation really doesn't matter. So, you know, I would say 30% most if you're single, but I would keep that number closer to 20%. And then if you're married, you know, if you make 100 k no more than 50 k in car, so you can each evenly have a $25,000 car, I recommend... Obviously, no debt, let alone depreciate an asset. No, 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 no. But if you do end up taking out the debt because you do what you want because you've grown, pay it off in a year. If you can't pay it off in a year, again, like I said, do what you want because you've grown. How to prioritize once in your budget pre discretionary income or discretionary income. You don't have to prioritize your, your wants in your discretionary income. That that's what they're that's what it's for. You can do you can do whatever you want with it. So you don't have to prioritize that's the, you prioritize the, <laughs> the necessities, debt payments, investments, lifestyle. When you get to lifestyle, that's money you can do whatever you want with because you should enjoy your money and put in the work to get to the point where you can enjoy your money. And if you want to spend your money on dandelions and just light them on fire because that's what you like doing. <laughs> That's wrong with you. Anyway, yeah, I'm, I'm just no, saying. I'm, 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 I'm being funny. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm saying everybody has their own vices, and it's like I want you to get to the point where whatever makes you happy that isn't a crime. Whatever makes you happy, and you got the money for it. It's I'm, not I'm a fine crime with that. With yeah. Respect to your partner. Yeah, too. yeah. yeah obviously, yeah. That too. Yeah. Yeah. If you're married, yeah, you got to have your morals in place on what y'all can and can't spend money on. But yeah, I mean, you get to the point where you got no debt, but a mortgage. You got six months mercy fund saved, and you invest in fifty percent pre tax, and you still have money left over. I literally do not care what you do with it as long as it's legal. That's it. And obviously, don't you know? Main reason for divorce is finances, so don't do something that your spouse don't like. And actually, don't like men and women. Don't be stingy with it. You know, don't be like, no, nah, I don't want to cheat it, bro. Like, so your, your man I, been playing video games and sports his whole life, talking about he can't go to the game or the bar with his friends. <laughs> or you, you don't want him to spend money on a fantasy league. Don't be nothing wild like that. And then y'all know your ladies like getting the hair and nails done, so you putting this worse. They get their hair and nails done, but you know, don't you know, don't be 
wild with it with your spouse. Hey, but, you know. Outside of that budget, I don't care what you do with the money. Like, you know, like I mean, not even track. You know what I'm trying to say? I don't even track, track that money if it's outside of the house. Yeah, you feel me? Yeah, if, if, the house being the financial house. Exactly. Yeah. If we each get a hundred dollars, I do not care what you do with a hundred dollars. Right. Now, if you spend a hundred dollars on a penny, you don't have to talk to me. <laughs> The pennies so out we, in the budget because so we're we on zero base. We got to talk about it. Yeah, we but you got to talk about look, it. As long as you're not, as long as you're not breaking the law or making it so we gonna have less money, I do not care at all. That's it. So, all right. Yep. Right. Hey, plugs. <laughs> hey, hey, synergy. What, what do I want to do? I don't know. Look. I don't know. FBI. <laughs> <laughs> Shameless plugs. Where can people find you at, Corey? You can follow me at sideline underscore Corey. Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. You can follow Jordan at Stop Stalling J. That's S T O P S T A L L I N G J A Y on everything. Business page. Finally Fit 06. That's F I N A L L Y F I T 06 on IG, Facebook, and YouTube. And make sure you hit a like on YouTube. You can follow us at Court and Info Effect on YouTube. Please subscribe. That like is free. That dislike is free too. But hit the like because you know it's saying, but you know it's, it's more positive when we see the likes. We like when yeah. you like what we like. So exactly. <laughs> yeah. I don't, even know if we, I don't know if we've gotten a dislike before, but you know, that's your price of admission, right? We do this, we do this for free. Love it, love a game, legacy building. So when they look back and see this work we put in but yeah please leave a like podcast apple podcast google spotify amazon leave rates and reviews before we get out of here just yeah. as a heads up if if it sounds a little funny around saying, about 30 minutes or so yeah. we had some a weird technology issue happening with our pro tools that's never happened before yeah. so it kind of abruptly cuts out cuts back in yeah. that's what happened and we'll end up uh putting the youtube strip at the end of the last 30 minutes exactly <laughs> yeah I, th I think we should be good but yeah y'all i mean you already know uh, we, we, we shouldn't right. because sorry to end it you, you already know the issue right but yeah apologies if it was messed up um, we don't. We didn't even grab the error, so we don't really know what to do. Yeah. But yep, that's, that's it. the first time. All yeah. right. Do you have anything else? No, sir. All right. So remember to save more and say less, and keep making better your best. And we will catch y'all in the next one. Let's go.